edges in snow. You want to find some, you want to do some lost edges and some found edges. So here I've got edges coming. They're going to get lost in the forest and then I'll find them again right there. I've got some up here where I see the sun kind of popping in out of the clouds. I'll just go like that. Impressionistic. I'm going to give you four or five helpful techniques on how to uh, plan or paint a winter landscape. Stay tuned to the end. I'm going to give you a power tip. And believe me, it'll be powerful. You'll want to stay tuned. Well, hey, plan air painters. Terry with Learning Plain Air here. If you're new to this channel, we're here to help beginner plain air painters learn how to make beautiful paintings and improve their plain air painting skills so they can bring some joy to their lives. And who doesn't need a little joy in their lives these, these days? So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications so that uh, you don't miss out on our weekly high mountain plein air painting adventures. Here for you every week to help you improve your plein air painting skills. This is an amazing scenery. I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Okay, let's just take a quick look at our setup here. The brushes we use, the canvas. Of course, Millie's here. She is, uh, she is trained in plein air painting. She can plein air paint, actually. I've trained her. I'll show you that in another video. Let's go to uh, the setup here. We've got the stool. We've got our paints. Let's just take a quick round of our paints. If you're new with us, we have some titanium white, yellow ochre, permanent rose, alizarin crimson, cad red, cadmium orange, cad yellow medium, cad yellow light, phthalo green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. All right, and then I've got some turpenoid, odorless turpenoid right here in a jar to mix with my paints. I've got a 12 by 16 plein air canvas board. And we've got the backpack here. We've got some tea and a mug, keep us warm. Look at the brushes here. I've got a couple uh, palette knives and uh, I've got, I mostly use filbert brushes really. These number 12 filbert brushes right here are kind of my, my weapons of choice. I've got a couple other smaller filberts. I carry one flat with me and I carry a couple Robert Simmons uh, Signet brushes right here. These ones right here, they have a bit bigger bristle on them. But as I always say in my previous videos, as a beginner, just use cheaper brushes and use cheaper paint. Use a lot of paint. As my teacher said, paint like a rich man uh, if you're into impressionistic painting and, and this style of painting. So, Well, how about this? If you're gonna paint a winter landscape, can you think of a better place? Unbelievable. We're at a place called uh, Top of the Pines above Ridgeway, Colorado, Mount Snuffles. We've painted that before. 14,178 feet. I feel like I could just reach out and touch it. All right, let's begin. All right, welcome and let's get going here. If you're new to this channel, the first thing that we do is uh, stage one of my four stage painting process called the uh, the drawing stage. In the drawing stage, I do a couple things. I do a wash. Today I'm gonna use a warm wash to complement with the cool, the cools, colors and values in the landscape. And uh, I think that'll contrast nicely. And incidentally, you hit the link in the description and uh, just put in your email and we'll give you uh, updated tips and techniques and freebies along the way if you sign up uh, to our email list. But uh, well, real quick, the four Ps are pieces, placement, proportion, and perspective. I wanna break the complex landscape down into three to five larger pieces. And with a winter landscape, that's especially what you want to do. You don't want to overcomplicate things. The placement, everything has a boundary where it goes in the painting. So you want to make sure everything is placed properly in the painting. Proportion, you wanna make sure that everything is sized properly, whether it comes to trees or buildings or barns, mountains compared to the tree, the barn compared to the mountain. Make sure everything has its proper proportion, perspective. So you wanna make sure with perspective that if you have a chance to show perspective through lines, such as a barn line or a road or railroad tracks or a building, that you show proper perspective and things dissipate toward the vanishing point in the proper way. All right, let's get on to uh, the drawing part of the drawing stage. I'm gonna put it in fast mode and then afterwards I'll show you how I did the drawing and the pieces. Okay, let's show you real quick what I did in the drawing stage there, and then we'll get on to stage two, the abstract stage, and get into some painting here. But I broke the complex landscape down into uh, four pieces. Piece number one is gonna be the far off distant mountain range, which is very close to me. I chose to kind of zoom in a little bit on this painting, 
And then piece number two, there is a, oh, evergreen. I guess those are juniper bushes and evergreens that are coming down on the foreground hillside. And piece number three, as I get further into the, uh, the landscape receding from me, there's more of those evergreen trees. They'll be lighter in value. And piece number four will be my foreground snow right here. And the, other, the other two things we want to do in the, the drawing stage are, are briefly suggest some shadows when you can, and then your darkest darks. And for me, my, as you know from previous videos, the darkest darks will be in the foreground. There'll be this set of trees right here. If I had any rocks that were real dark. And then as things go back into the, uh, into the landscape, they'll be lighter in value and they'll be cooler in temperature and color. So on to the abstract stage, here we go. Where we just try to block in the large shapes with the right color value and temperature. And uh, let's give you tip number one with winter landscape painting on plein air. And that is that you want to nail your design and your composition. You want to really keep it simple. Uh, with a winter landscape, there can be a lot going on, especially when there's snow. So you really, our brain tends to want to overcomplicate things and add detail. And you, know, you really want to think about with design and composition, what attracted you to the scene? You don't want to paint everything in your state or your province or your country. <laughs> you, want to, you want to just, there's a temptation to get everything in and put it all in. But what, what drew you to this scenery? For me, it was the, the deep dark purples and that majestic mountain range in the back, but then contrasted by the nice greens and the snow color in the foreground. And so I want to make sure I capture that. So for my darkest darks, which are on this side, of the painting to the right, those evergreen trees and junipers, I've mixed up a mixture to make a dark green of some ultramarine blue, cad yellow, alizarin crimson, just to make a dark blue color. I've got a little phthalo blue in there with our winter plein air landscape. And we'll get you a few tips here as we go. Kind of using a number 12 brush, just big thick brush strokes. Tip number two is you always want to work big to small, big to small. You want to start out with your big pieces and you want to spend 90% of your painting blocking in the pieces and just spend 10% at the end on the details, especially when it's cold out. I mean, right now I think it's 20, 20 some odd degrees. It's kind of chilly. You know, I don't want to sit out here for four hours in particular. I love it, but uh, not that much. So you want to get done. You want to not worry about catching every detail. Just be free yourself up to be a little bit messy, a little bit sloppy between the pieces and the lines. People will appreciate that. They'll appreciate the feeling, the emotion, you know, that you painted with to show that it was a cold winter landscape day. And then some far off evergreens before we get to the magnificent mountain. So this group of trees, I mixed up a combination of some ultramarine blue some cad yellow medium to get a green color, and then I grade it down. If you watch previous videos, use the opposite and opposing color, complementary color red in a green to gray it down and not make it as powerful. I'm gonna put a little more ultramarine blue in there. Just kind of blew it up a little bit. Squint your eyes a little bit, help you see the big pieces. My piece number two, I want to maintain that darkness, so I'm going to get that back in there with a little alizarin crimson, some ultramarine blue, and just a touch of cad yellow medium for a dark, a real dark green color. I'm just going to get that on there and get that in. Just look at it as a piece. Try not to cover up those warms that you put in there. Leave those in there. All right, let's go ahead and get the sky color in next. Uh, I think that'll help me judge my other colors. Do that. I've got a mixture of some bluish purple color. So some ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson, permanent rose, and then a lot of titanium white. Titanium white is a cool color. So as I look at the sky, it's a very cool, cool blue color. In fact, I'm gonna dip into a little bit of cerulean blue, just a little bit. It's a very, very cool blue color. There is some of that color in the sky, just not that much, just not that bold or brilliant. I'm going to leave a little of the yellow showing through. I'll probably cover it up, the wash. But sometimes as an impressionist, you know, you like to have colors bounce off each other. Warms and cools, lights and darks, creates contrast. And contrast creates interest in a painting. Sky has different gradations and planes in it as well due to atmospheric effects. So you want to show that. Like I said, don't, don't get stressed out. I mean, I've got gloves on. It's winter, it's cold, I'm freezing. 
you know, we're trying to get an impression, a painting, an impression. And we're trying to have fun, trying to reduce stress. <laughs> so don't, take it easy on yourself. Don't be too too particular about it. And look good, I promise, at the end we'll bring it together. There's just some, some warms in the sky, but not too warm. So I've got some titanium white, and I just add a little bit of yellow ochre to it. And just trust your eye. Be creative, be different, be unique. He says you can't put yellow ochre in the sky, or green in the sky. Add a little more ultramarine blue into this mixture, this puddle that I have going on, because there's some clouds out there. There's some, some stuff happening. So I want to show that. Let's work on piece number one, the Back. mountainscape. Tip number two was paint big to small or large to small. Save your details till the end. Tip number three is paint thin to thick. And what I mean by that is in the beginning stages of your painting, you just really want to block in two-dimensional shapes, flat surfaces with no form to them. That comes later, stage three, the forming stage. I have three different levels of layering or thickness that I use in my painting process. The first one is with terpenoid, odorless terpenoid. Very thin, like we're doing now, like the wash. You're just using color, but you're just doing very thin paint. And then phase two of that kind of layering is going to be where I add my medium. And I'll show you that in a second. I use a uh, gel. I think I'm using some uh, Zura Newton type product now, but that is kind of a gel paste that you mix with your painting to give you that ala prima type look, that kind of nice wet, wet on wet, thick paint kind of look. Then lastly, I'll finish off with just pure paint, just pure thick paint at the end of my painting. So thin to thick. Now we're working thin. And let's get into tip number tip number four right away we're cruising with these tips is color value and temperature in a winter landscape you want to constantly be, be comparing one shape or one piece to another in color value and temperature let me explain it like this especially when there's no sun out when there's sun out you have to worry about light and shadow you have a vast array of colors a vast array of values light to dark okay when the sun's not out like this and you're painting a winter landscape you're really doing a tonal painting, what's called a, a value-based painting. And if you remember our four values, you have a light value, you have a mid-tone, a dark, and a black. So you wanna think of your pieces in terms of those four values, light, mid-tone, dark, and black. Your, your blacks and darks are gonna be in the foreground, and your mid-tones and your lights will be as you go further back. And when you have a day like this, when it's sunny out, you have this whole wide range that you have to work from with colors, values, but when it's like this, things are closer together. <laughs> So we'll go like this. You don't have that dial. You maybe have half. You have, you're kind of scrunched down with your values and you're scrunched down with your colors. So if you want an accurate winter landscape painting, you need to be able to show that in your colors and values. And the way you show that is you're constantly scanning and comparing one piece to another as you lay down your brush strokes. So after you put a piece down, you want to ask yourself, do I make it lighter or darker? Do I make it warmer or cooler? And if, if you watch that video one or two videos ago, that's what I talked about, how to do that in a painting. And if you can do that and do it accurately, you will really quickly improve your painting skills just by reminding yourself and asking yourself those questions. Kind of space out some brush strokes of different colors. I want to try to get that color bounce I was talking about earlier. I'm going to dip into some yellow ochre now and go on the, on the warmer side. This side of the mountain range has more warms in it. So I want to kind of show that it's very cool on the left and a little bit warmer on the right. When you put that in early, those differentiating strokes, comparing the colors and values and temperatures, and you just put them in. Don't worry about making a masterpiece. Just get those in and leave them in. You'll see at the end of your painting that it just looks like genius if you, if you can get it right. Most of the time I just cover it up and ruin it. But uh... <laughs> Okay, next we want to catch this. This evergreen forest that's at the base of all these Colorado mountains, they go up about 10, 10,000 feet or so in elevation, and then the trees stop, called the tree line. And so it's a kind of a crucial part of describing the mountains here in Colorado. So I want to nail that color and get it. It's just a rich, rich, deep blue, purple color. As an impressionist, you want to kind of try to push, push the boundaries of your colors. Go a little bit in the uh, uncomfortable zone. You can always dial it back, but as an impressionist, you know, I mean, you're a painter, people love color. And if it's there in the landscape and you can see it, 
You know, don't be afraid to get it in. Don't be afraid to push the color boundary. Go a little bit on the air on the side of too much color. Be a little bold. People will appreciate it in your paintings. Gonna try to push the color there with a little more ultramarine blue. Quick look at what we're what we're gonna paint next. We're gonna paint that snow piece in the foreground. It's a very, very cool color, especially compared to these trees on the hillside and the distant mountain. So let's just see if we can kind of nail the right color value and temperature of that piece right now. Okay, let's go commando here with the camera again and just kind of give you some color mixing techniques and tips. Take a close up look at so far what we have here. Very early in the stage. I go over our four tips here. Number one, the design and composition. Number two, big to small. Number three, thin to thick. Number four, color value and temperature. Compare the pieces. We'll get into number five here with the snow. Certainly, uh, you always want to, when you're doing snow in a winter landscape, is get some titanium white. Very cool color by itself, so we gotta put something with it. Don't be afraid to put other colors in the snow. Other colors you wouldn't think would be there. But right now, I'm gonna reach into a little bit of phthalo blue, which is a very powerful, cool blue color. Get that in there. And with snow, oftentimes there's a little bit of a little bit of red. So I'm gonna go with lizard and crimson, not much. Mix it in there. And then I'm gonna go into another cool blue, some cerulean blue. See how much that cools it up right there? Really cools it up. Now that's gonna be part of the equation right there. There'll be parts that'll be different. It'll be a little bit whiter. So I'll just grab some of that color, but then keep a whiter color. I grabbed some and pushed it over here. Keep that color in there. And then I'm gonna get a third color, kind of a shadow color, a little bit darker blue. So let's keep those colors in there and I keep them together so I can compare. And I'm gonna go with some ultramarine blue, put it in there. I'm gonna go with some permanent rose, just any kind of red color, cad red could work if you have red. And I'm gonna make it kind of a deeper, darker purple color for some of the shadows that I see. People have stepped in the snow and some cross country skiers up here. All right, let's see what that looks like on the canvas. Here we go. Put that color down. Let's just start blocking it in. Just quickly, loosely, large brush. Just get it all in and block that shape in. And we have a hillside here coming down, so I want to try to show that in the trees. Let's just try to describe that shape best we can without getting too, too exact. Keep it loose. Keep it cool. Don't get too uptight about it. So let's talk about snow, okay? With a winter landscape. Let's talk about edges and texture. With edges, you wanna show what are called some lost and found edges. And we'll show a little bit more about that. But you want to kind of blur some edges and you wanna have some sharp edges in other parts of the painting because snow is kinda of like that, you know? Not everything has a sharp edge. Not everything is defined and drawn out. So we wanna kinda of loosen up our brains and paint a little bit looser when there's snow. And we wanna show some texture too, and we'll show that in a little bit as we build up. I'm gonna go into my shadow color now and just kinda of show in the snow where there's a little bit more of those shadows just to get that color in there. We can refine it later. To harmonize a winter painting, you want to put some of the colors that are in the foreground into the background and vice versa. Some of the colors in the background into the foreground. So we'll just suggest it. Don't want to get too carried away with it. You're just trying to find these colors, values, and temperatures in the shape. 10%, save the detail. Save the uh, flea on the dog's butt till the end. When you have a background piece like that, just to get rid of the edges, you know, just kind of just take your brush. and just kind of smooth some of it out. And that's kind of more the look we're gonna be after. All right, let's just make this, this forest a little bit darker here to show some proper distance, perspective, atmosphere. A little more alizarin crimson, a little more red into that mixture. Here's the mixture I've got going for this, this foothill forest color. Let's just get that in. Thick strokes. I just kind of lost the, the value, the darkness of it. So I want to show that again. Go back in and get some tree colors here going again. 
dip into my terpenoid, get a little ultramarine blue. This green color again, it's a little bit closer to me, so it's gonna be a little darker in value than those colors we were just working on. It's just that, kind of that forest out there beyond the snow, this field that I'm in. Gotta make it a little bit darker than the value behind it. It's at the base of those trees, I'm just seeing it. Right there. Just like that. And then we'll darken this up a little bit right now. Those are in crimson, a little ultramarine blue, and a little cad red. These foreground trees, I make them just a little bit darker, a little bit more interest. Kind of taller, they come up here like that. Make this a little bit more green, like a dark green. So let's get into some cad yellow medium. I'm gonna put a little phthalo blue in there. A little more cad yellow medium, more phthalo blue. I want it to be real dark. Back to the trees here. Like that. It's a little bit more what I was after. I like the reds in there, so I'll leave those in there. I want to produce some variation in your trees. Don't make them all uniform, spaced apart. It's not really how they appear in nature. Just kind of refining the sky a little bit, adding a little more light in there as we see it happen. Kind of some nice effects. Again, you don't want to you don't want to do the sky all the same color. So I've got some yellow ochre and some titanium white. In here, I also mix some cad yellow light and some cerulean blue to make a kind of a cool green color that I kind of see on days like this. Kind of a greenish, cool light color, and just like that. Kind of in the. We only see some other dogs. She's making some noises here. Apologies. It's weird, the sun's coming in and out. As an artistic choice, you could choose to do something like this. As an impressionist, dip into cad yellow medium. Get a big old scoop of paint, like that, on your brush. And then just go up here, where I see the sun kind of popping in out of the clouds. And just go like that. Impressionistic sun. It's Voila. kind of fun. Might leave it, might not. We'll see. Okay, let's go into this piece here and just kind of further refine it. Kids are, kids are out sledding, the dogs are out, you know, off in the distance. I'm kind of up here tucked away on a hill by myself, but got my wife along with me today. She's in the car reading, just getting away from the kids. Whoops, did I say that out loud? She's got a nice book and uh, enjoying herself there. Put some worms in here in this piece. Kind of some dead forest pieces just to warm it up a little bit. Show some interest. I want to tell you too, we're getting into the forming stage. We talked about tip number three, thin to thick. We're getting a little thicker now, as you might be able to see. And I want to show you this medium. I'll put it on my brush. Uh, Windsor and Newton. Let me grab it for you. Sorry, there you go. It's just kind of a thick, uh, kind of a clear toothpaste type looking thing. There it is right there. Windsor and Newton liquid impasto. So I've been trying that as of late. Pretty cool product. That's okay. I like it. You mix it in with your paints in the middle stages, the abstract stage, which we're in right now, as you get a little bit thicker. So that's what we're kind of doing right now. Getting the snow in there will help us define and relate everything a little bit better. Got a mixture of titanium white and very, very cool cerulean blue with a touch of permanent rose in there. It is one of the lighter values in the painting. We can use the palette knife at first, so just get a big old scoop on there with some of that paint. Just try to briefly describe some of those shapes that you see in the landscape. The snow coming down like this. We can go back over this again later, you know, with uh, with our big number 12 brush and kind of smooth it all out. But for now, I just want to get that color in there so it can help me with all the other colors. The snow off in the distance, in the distant mountains, it's going to be a, a cooler color and lighter in value. So always remember that. Just go quick. 
the more you think about it, the worse it is. Just go. <laughs> Sometimes with the palette knife, what I do is I just kind of gently hold it right here and just let it slide along like this for a snow effect. It's kind of nice. And then when you want to do those downward strokes that come off the mountain, just turn your palette knife to the side. And that works really well. Palette knife skills are hard to, they're hard to develop. I will say, probably one of the harder things, still working on it. <laughs> Once you pick it up, it's, it's just as a really fun, fun way to paint. And it produces some variety in your painting. And that's kind of what you want, you know? We talked about edges in snow. You want to find some, you want to do some lost edges and some found edges. So here I've got edges coming. They're going to get lost in the forest and then I'll find them again right there. I've got some edges here. They'll get lost in the forest and then I'll find them again right here. Some snow will pick up. That's a really nice, beautiful effect to, to do with your snow. Lost and found edges. Remember that one. And we'll talk about texture here in a minute with snow in the foreground, okay, foreground snow. I've got a mixture of titanium white, some phthalo blue, a little bit of red in there. Now the value of this piece right here is a little bit, a little bit darker. It's going to have more blue in it, more color in it. It's darker than the snow on the mountains. Um, it's really tricky sometimes, but take a big old glob of paint on your number 12 brush like that. And one thing with winter landscapes on plein air is you you want to paint thick snow if you like this style. You want to show that it was a big snowy day. Snow has planes and gradients and edges and shadows to it. It's not just taking a little bit of titanium white and barely skidding it across your canvas. Uh, that's, there's places to do that. You want to have quiet places and you want to have noisy places, so to speak. But uh, when you make it noisy, make it noisy. Put a lot of paint on your, on your brush and get her going. It's snow. It has some texture. It has some has some fun shapes to it, and kind of make it take take the brush like this. I grab it at the top of the brush like this, and I'll push the snow into the trees like that, because that's what's that's what I'm seeing. And I'll take and I'll flip it over, and do it again over here on these trees like that. And you have all these interesting brush stroke effects that kind of describe the snow a little bit more interestingly than barely skidding some white paint across your canvas kind of reminded why I got into painting in the first place. I don't know about you, but I had a stressful sales job and that's really why I took up painting at the Art Students League of Denver. I, I took lessons from everybody I could indoors and then I stumbled upon, found out how wonderful plain air painting is. It just combines your love of being outdoors and, and God's beauty and just the quietness and the peace and the joy that it brings you is quite an amazing thing. And that's why I love plain air painting. But uh, you know, if you're watching, throw in a comment, let me know you know, what you're working on, how long you've been painting, where you're from. Love to hear from you guys. If I can help you in any way or if you have questions or if you have advice for me, go for it. I'm still learning. It's a lifelong learning process. That's for sure. But it's rewarding and it's fun. I think with plein air painting, people can really sense kind of the emotion and the passion and the, the time and place of where you were. I live in the mountains of Colorado, so this is kind of what our family does. We love to be out here paddle boarding in the summer and four-wheeling in the fall and skiing and painting in the winter and skating. Hope you take it up if you're thinking about it and haven't already. If you are, just encourage you to keep going, keep learning on our snow hill and nice and thick. Hopefully you can see. I'm too cold to take the camera down and show you, but hopefully you can see how thick I'm getting. We talked about that point earlier, thin to thick, to make it nice and thick and buttery like this. So that's what you want to do. And then and just go pure thick paint. Let some accidents happen like that. Just do it, just be brave. Let your brush roll, let the paint roll. Stuff like that makes you look like a genius when you didn't know what you were doing really. <laughs> okay, here's gonna be a fun thing. Let's put, uh, let's put this tree in the painting. Gosh, I felt like Bob Ross there for a minute, but he was my childhood hero. There's a tree, if you can see it right there, I'll show it. Okay, we're gonna paint that conifer tree right there. I think it'll be a nice accent. The trunk has a nice mix of warms and cools in it. And uh, it, uh, as you can see, can contrast nicely as a shape in front of that far off mountain and help us show perspective because it'll be darker. But it'll also have some warms in it. It's a very nice, pretty green color. I'll zoom in. You can see that right there, okay? So let's go for that next. 
And I'm just gonna use a little bit smaller brush, kind of like a number four or number six filbert, just so I have a little more control over that tree trunk. And I'm gonna mix up a color that has some kind of a brown color. So let's go with, start with a little yellow ochre. And then I'll use some of my purples. So let's go with ultramarine blue. And then just put a little alizarin crimson in there, or red color, magenta, cad red, whatever you want. I'm gonna dip into some cerulean blue because the base of the tree trunk is very cool. And this will be a nice contrast with our snow. So I'm gonna start right here, face the brush upside down, and just start with the trunk like that. And then go up. And then just keep going up and up and up and up like that. Let's mix up the color of green. So however you'd like to do that. There's a million different ways you can do that. You see my uh, color mixing video if you haven't already, how to see and mix color, oil paint colors on plein air. Some yellow, I'm gonna get a little orange, cat orange, a little ultramarine blue, just to blue it a little bit. Put it on and see how it looks. Scoop into your medium if you'd like and then mix it into the paint. Get a big old glob again on the paintbrush. And start at the top. And let's just impressionistically just go like that real quick. Just to add a variety of color to that canopy. The needles on it are a round shaped and you could try to do that with your brush. With me, I just do them like this. I just, I just do it really quickly and impressionistically, just like that. Just a few strokes. just to show the gesture of it. I don't want to paint every needle on there. Not interested. Up again, we'll get the middle part of the canopy. It goes kind of like this, a stroke there, and we can go like this, and then just fill in some strokes impressionistically. Right there. Let's just show hints of the light hitting the actual Mid-tone colors of the trees. Reds are in shadow. Reds are beside greens. Reds with greens help people read your colors and values better because they're there. So throw those in where appropriate, where you can. Let's show that right here with some twigs coming out here in different directions. All right, let's quickly go over our five tips here for painting a winter landscape and see if we accomplish them. You want to tip number one, your design, your comp composition. You want to keep it simple. You don't want to paint the whole world in your painting. Just keep it intimate, small, and what attracted you. Tip number two, you want to paint big to small, big shapes to small shapes. Tip number three, thin to thick. Four, you want to be comparing piece to piece your color, value, and temperature and constantly ask yourself, do I need to make it warmer or cooler? darker or lighter. And then with snow, you want to think about edges with your snow. You want to think about quiet areas that don't have thick paint. And you want to think about noisy areas that do have thick paint and show the dimension and edges and different colors in the snow. And just show the tops of those trees. Just ever so gently, not too much, just to put in another lighter, warmer value to contrast. Big old glob for some final brush strokes right there. Okay, let's take a quick look at the palette. We got it pretty messy. Those are the colors that we used. A lot of cools, some warms too at the end there. And I'll give you a close up of some brush strokes that we did, the damage that we did today. We did decide to keep that sun in there. And I'm glad we did. What a beautiful place. Hey, thanks for joining me. That was fun. Terry with Learning Plain Air. See you next time. God bless. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and watch some more videos. Watch that one right there. That will be real helpful. Or that one right there. Power tip coming up next. See you next time. Bye. Okay, we're back in the studio for this week's power tip. Let's make it quick. We're using this painting that we did up above Uray, Colorado a couple videos ago called uh, How to Simplify Plain Air Painting. And what I want to show you is these de details here in the snow. One of the tips that uh, works really well is when there's reflected light, especially when there's sun out, like there was in this painting, you can kind of show 
some different brush strokes using different colors in the snow. Let me give you a close up to tell you what I mean. I've got some greens in there. I've got some colors that are in the mountain in there. And that's reflected light coming into the snow. You wanna keep it the same tone, the same value as the snow piece itself, but you want to vary up the color with strokes like this beside each other to show an impressionistic effect and the colors bounce off each other and produce an effect that's really pleasing to the eye. And some of that color there is, is from the, the uh, colors in the window we're reflecting in. Some of it's from the sky. The sun was out. So when you see that and the sun's out, try to include that reflected light in the snow. It's a really, really nice effect. It will make your painting look a lot more interesting and appealing. All right, there you go.